Hello everybody, John Craig here with Performance Plus Tennis and today we have Angel from Madrid, mm -hmm. Spain. And we're going to be working on your serve and it sounds like you got some issues with your serve that we're going to try to resolve in today's lesson. And a lot of things we're going to work on are going to help you with your serve at home. So let's tear into it. Thank so tell, you so me a little, tell me a little about your serve. My serve, um, well what I was telling uh, Randy before is like I don't know when uh, sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's really bad. And I don't know uh, especially where to toss. I heard so many times 11, 12, 1. Okay. Uh, so I ended up, you know, like not um, swinging with full confidence. And I think I collapsed instead of like, you know, um, lift my body up and forward. Okay. But I'm sure I have a lot of mistakes. Okay. A lot of those issues can be resolved focusing on one key element. We're going to get into that. So when you leave today, rather than being confused about what you're doing, hopefully you can focus in on one thing that kind of controls everything for you and that'll really help your serve. All right. Awesome. So why don't you go ahead and hit a few serves. Just take a look here and see what you come up with here. Okay, so um, you know what I'm seeing is that you're trying to generate generate a lot of power because we want to hit the serve hard, but you're not sequencing the movements right, and not your power is not originating from the right source. So mm -hmm. um, on your on your uh, serve and your in your trophy position, your balance position, you're very front leg uh, dominant because your right leg's really not loading into the serve. So the first thing I like to do is work on the feet. So why don't you show me your, your setup for your serve? You can just imagine you're serving, and then go to what you think your trophy or balance position is. Where is that place where you sort of store the energy and get your power? Okay. Okay. Let's go there again. Okay. We're going to make this super strong stretch here. Okay. Okay. We're going to pick this heel up so you flex into this uh, leg. There you go. And we're going to make sure this stays over here. Okay. Comfortable, relaxed, soft. Just hold it with enough tension okay. so that you control what you're doing, but not too much. So you can feel the weight of your racket head. Mm -hmm. And the left hand is going to be a good, strong stretch. Head's going to be the inside. And you're going to go down the leg so you've got that back leg up. Okay. Back heel up. There you go. That's much better. Okay, do it again. <clears throat> Good. So, you know, the first key thing is to improve your balance. If you get your if you get your balance right, then you have a chance to generate easy power and sequence your body movements correctly. So, that's got to that's got to happen. You won't see any any ATP or WTA player who will serve and they'll enter into the swing with the back heel down. They all loading in. And the reason why is because when you angle into the serve properly, the right hip's a little lower than the left, so it's going to entail a little bit more knee flex here and up on the ball of the foot, and that loads you in. And at this stage, you should feel like your weight is pretty evenly balanced between both feet. Does that feel better? Yeah. Now get your left arm vertical. Good. Okay. That's it. Okay? Much better. Yeah. So hit a few serves from there and just see if you can execute the serve and get into that same loaded position now. Better. Good. Yeah. Yep. Okay, again. All I'm watching is your feet. Good. Yeah, so the balance is so important because, as in your case, you're trying to hit the serve hard, but if you don't have the power originating from your legs, uh, then you're trying to source the power from other areas, and that's either going to cause you mistakes injuries, it's just not going to let your serve be as efficient as it should be. So that's the first order of business is that you really make sure that you've got the proper balance, you've got a good balance to, to really coordinate your movement from. So that's a big improvement so far. Okay. Um, next up, you, let's take a look at your grip here and take a look. And it, it looks like you hold the racket more like it's, like a, you kind of put your fist around it, like yeah. it's real tight, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. how, about, how about holding the racket less like a, like, like a, a, a club or a tool in more like an instrument, okay. more like it had a little finesse in it. So I like to hold the racket so that it's more in my fingers, yeah. not deep in my palm, yeah. but in my fingers. And I get a nice little separation here between the index and the middle finger. My thumb wraps around and I feel the weight of the racket heads. So if I grip tight, that disappears and I know I've got excessive tension, soften and I can feel the weight. And that's, I established that, that, that lack of tension right from the start. Mm -hmm. So when I do my routine, I let my left hand have control of the racket like this, and the right hand just floating on there, nice and soft. And then when I go like this and go into my routine, the racket's just floating. I can just feel it floating in my hand. There's no tension. And then when I come back here again, I don't change it. And then when I go into my serve, I don't change it again. Yeah. So I don't change it. So it's always loose. Nice and soft. So what I'd like, to, like you to do when you're practicing is you place the ball and you go to your balanced position. Either it falls in your hand or it doesn't, and you sit in that position. You feel yourself in that spot, right? right? <clears throat> oh, 
hold. Good. And the sequencing is really important because a lot of players will try to go into their knee bend before the ball is out of the hand. But you have to get the ball out of the hand first and while the ball is rising, that's your little window in time to sink into your legs. So when the ball begins to descend, you're loaded in so then you can go up and get it. So I let it go and then go that's here right. and then boom. Yeah, and what helps draw you into the balance position is the continuous raising of the left arm. So it releases and then it has to rise and when it rises it helps kind of lead you in. See that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try a couple more. Freeze. Freeze. Stay there. Freeze. Good. Heels up. Good. This looks good. Vertical. This is the, good. Yeah, this is where I go here. Now yeah. I used to go. I need to go more like. Yeah, because it, it helps get you into the angle, and then it yeah. gives you more more range of momentum, to, a motion to, to rotate back to the ball yeah. too. Let me try that. <clears throat> so that will be right. It's better. Down, good, much better. So you had a question about placing the ball, where it should be, and if you don't know where the toss should be, then obviously you're just throwing it up and guessing, so we don't want to do that. So ideally for most conventional serves, like a flatter serve or a flat slice, you want that ball to be in what I call the slot of power, and that's where the contact is going to be between the shoulder and the ear, right in here. It's, it's a myth to be out there because it's weak out there. Yeah. You can see that? But when I get it in here, I want it right between the shoulder and the ear, right here. And you can see that the racket's inside my hand. This is weak. We don't want to be like this. We want the racket to be inside here like this. So it's right in this slot. And when I get in my balance position, my left hand is showing me that right there. And when it moves away, I'm trying to catch it right in that spot. See that? And from a side view, it's going to be slightly in front. Slightly in front. So I'm leaning into it, shifting into it like this. Okay? So that kind of gives you a general guideline. And that can vary a little bit depending on what kind of spin you're hitting. It's, obviously, it's impossible to toss the ball perfectly every single time, but you have a range that you can, you can use your left hand to guide you for. Next up, let's go ahead and do a couple more ball placements and trophy positions. So this is something that you can practice at home, too. You don't have to be on a tennis court. You can get anywhere and you can do your routine. Imagine you're on a court, do your routine. Boy, this ball's a little flat. <clears throat> go. And I can place the ball up and go into my balanced trophy position. That ball was playable. See that? So you can, you can practice that way as well, okay? Do a couple more. And regarding your, your feet, like, do you, like, you don't separate too much, like this, like, it's pointing there? Great question. Uh, my feet are more parallel than not, okay? The reason being is that if they're, if they're this way, my knees are going to splay in opposite directions that's weak and, and potential for injuries. So I want my feet to be more parallel than not. Uh, my left foot can be a little bit angled, um, but my legs are going to move in a parallel position like that. As far as width, your, the width of your feet looks fine. Mm -hmm. Should be approximately the width of your width of your hips. And then it's here, there. <clears throat> there. Now flex, good. And then, yeah. yeah, and load into that back leg and let that uh, let that heel rise. Does that feel better? Yeah. So your power is always going to originate from the ground up, right? So that's the first key thing, and then the ball placement. And the next thing is what the le how the left arm sort of sequences and organizes everything. And what we've seen uh, on some of your, your serves today is that your, your left arm has got to move away sooner. So in other words, what's happening on your serve, and we'll show this, is that you're go entering into your swing before your left arm is pulled away or your legs are pushing. So it looks like this. Okay. So this should just be trying to catch up to your body. And what makes your body move is the left arm pulling away and the pushing of the legs. And the racket will fall and rise by itself. So what I see on your serve is that you're f forcing it too much. Okay. You're, you're trying to generate power um, almost from the wrong sources and the sequencing's out. So it's a good thing you're such a good athlete because if you weren't, you'd be very difficult to do it. But you're, you're able to get power, but it's not controlled power, is it? Yeah. Right? So what, how do we fix this? Well, when you get into your balanced trophy position, and you see the balls there and you want to play it, the left arm's going to pull away first in a semicircle, and you're going to push with your legs. And that action is going to cause the racket to fall naturally and rise to the ball, contact to the ball. Okay? So we, we, we don't understand. You hear a lot of coaches say, keep the left arm up, keep the left arm up. You see a lot of players will serve like this, they'll keep the arm up. But this is blocking your serve, and you really have to get the arm stretched to get in position, but it's got to move away and tuck to be the catalyst to get your body to move. Try, to, try this exercise. This is, a good, this is a really good exercise. So I'm going to stop at contact from here, here, here. Okay. 
So I can even get up on the balls of my feet here and hold my balance. Mm -hmm. up, see that? Yeah. But I'm, when my goal here is just to try to sequence from here to there. That movement right there. Let's see you try that. And let the left arm pull away in a semicircle and tuck. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I want you, I would love for you to be able to do this. Okay. Okay, yeah. got you. Good. Yeah, and loosen up. Good. And and really it, it seems counterintuitive, but when you get to the top, you've thrown your racket upward, right? Yeah. When it gets to the top, it's not un unnatural for it to want to stall. Look. I can yeah. I can I can send it up there pretty quick. And it'll yeah. it'll stall because yeah. the momentum is going up. So, I don't have to go that fast. But there's your quickness. See, the quickness in your motion is to the ball. It's the acceleration with the, like, is the That's right. There you go. It's Instead to the ball. like me, I'm going like, that's where I collapse, because I'm more like, but it's, it's just basically more like. Up, yeah. go up and stop on contact. Yeah. That's going to help you get your, 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 your tempo right too. Yeah. Your rhythm of your swing right, because we haven't touched on this yet, but your swing is actually faster after you make contact. So your swing looks more like this. It's faster coming down than it's going up. So, okay, uh, that's a really good tip. Slow, quick, slow. And then, then let, just let it, let it, yeah, let it and I just let be it, natural. Like when you follow through, then you just follow through. Yeah, you let it be natural, right? But, the, but the ball responds to what you bring to contact. And the left arm's gonna help you with that. And the feet are gonna help you with that. And the ball placement's gonna help you with that. And now accelerate. And accelerate up. Good. Okay. Do that again. Good. And can stop on contact this time again. Okay. I'm going to test your knowledge here. You and stop on contact. Yeah. Okay. We're at contact. Soften up. Relax it. And now finish your serve. Okay. Pretty good. Go to contact again. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Just go up there. I just need to work go. on these. Yeah, go. And from here. Go yes. up. Relax. I yeah. feel tension here, right? Okay, gotcha. Now let's go here on edge. We're going to go on edge. Look at it. Yeah. And now let me take it. Yeah. See how their hands below lower than your elbow? Yeah. Try to let that happen. Then bring it down like that. All right. Swing up. Keep your elbow up. Yeah. So swing up. Try to keep your elbow up and turn it over like that. Just bring it down easy. There you go. I think the key is like to swing up. It's up. Because I swing down. Forward, forward. Like kind of like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the next one I want you to try, which is really counterintuitive, is I want you to try to play the serve but not follow through. So you've been practicing the skill of bringing the racket up to the contact point. Yeah. But I want you to see if you can, you don't have to even hit it hard. Just place the ball up and stop on contact. See that? And that helps you to understand how, where the acceleration has to happen to make the ball go. Because yeah. here I'm making contact, here it's gone. I can't help it. Yeah. See that? So the ball's always gonna respond to what you bring to contact. So this will help you with a lot of different things, but in particular it'll help you, help you get your, your swing rhythm right. So it's, it's slow, and then it's quick, and the ball's gone, and just try to hold it there. But I didn't heat up. Good try. Yeah, the ball was too. The ball didn't allow you to. It's too far forward and low. Yeah. So get the ball up above you a little higher. But I was softening my hand. Yeah, nice and relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> so it's too far in front of you. I know. There you go. Get it above you again. Just try to stop. Pop it and stop right in contact. Nice and easy. Still more above you. See what happens is it's difficult to stop at contact if the ball's in front because your swing goes forward yeah. and then the momentum wants it, you have to go past. But if you, if you put it above you and go up, you can stop right on the ball. But again, it's too forward. A little bit too forward. Well, for, the, for this exercise, it yeah. may not have been for your serve. Yeah, no. Now, that was probably the most relaxed motion I've seen from yeah. you today, right? Did the ball go pretty well? The, what, what we're looking for is a swing that looks effortless, but a ball that moves yeah. much quicker than it looks like the swing made it go. Mm -hmm. So now hit a few serves, just relax, and, and really don't try to force it at all. And let's see what you come up with. See, what happens is, is that if your swing 
is if your swing is forward and fast, like this, if it's forward and fast and I'm swinging really fast forward, the racket it actually only travels as fast as my arm's going. Whereas if you swing upward and a little slower, look at how the racket head goes a lot faster than the arm. So you need to get it above you and go up over the top more than you need to go so hard forward. It's a subtle difference, but it's a significant difference. Yeah. Let's just boil it down to a couple simple things. Starts with the feet. Improve your balance, right? Um, improve your, your trophy position, right? Um, get, know where you want to place the ball and then know how your left hand is going to really sequence the movement with the leg drive and then really take the force out of it, yeah. okay? You're a really good athlete and, you're, and that's the thing about really good athletes is that we're used to athletically putting a lot into everything. You actually get more productivity by actually feeling like you relax more and, and take the effort out. Plus, you'll, you'll greatly reduce the chance of getting an injury, that kind of a thing and as well. And exhausted, because what happened is like after three or four games <clears throat> of serving, I'm exhausted. Already. Yeah, it's, you want it to feel like it takes less effort to get the same productivity. Okay, Let's do a couple more. Just see if you can just relax, let it go. Nice and easy. Way better. Yep, we load into the legs again. I'm always going to look at the legs and the feet first. There you go. Good. Yeah, and again, just really work on, on those three concepts and then take the force out of it. See how easy you can swing and get the ball to, to pop away because you're accelerating into contact. You can't help it after it's gone, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, you're, the first serves you're hitting today, it looks like you're still trying to help it out here. Like you're, you yeah. can't. It's too late. It's too late, right? What, per, what percentage of your power um, are you hitting on these serves? Like if I said hit it as hard as you can, that would be 100%. What percentage do you think you're... Because it looks like you're trying to hit it 90% of your power. Yeah. It, just, it appears that way. It appears that you're trying to force that as much power out of it as you can. Why don't you back down to relaxing and do 60%? Yeah. There you go. And you're going to see that your ball is still going to travel yeah. at, at close to the, the surge where you're really trying to bang it. And again, because if your arm is swinging really fast later in the swing, the racket will trail the hand. Whereas if you get the sequencing right, the racket will accelerate through, but it won't appear to be so much effort, right? So the idea is to get the racket head to move a lot faster than your arm moves, right? By being relaxed, yeah. right? Serve. See, that was the most relaxed the racket was, but I need to trust that. And that was. It was a good spot. Yeah, but you see the swing is better. I know I miss it, but I think those are what I call good misses because I know. Yeah. It's nice, relaxed. Look at me. There were more good things than bad things. Right. Now the toss is too low. That's what I, they are hitting the net. A little forward. Yeah. So again, you know, there's a point where if, I'm, if my contact is here, if I yeah. go in front of this, there's only one place my arm can go. Where is it? Down starts to come down. Yeah. So if I'm making contact in that range, um, I'm going to put the ball in the net, right? So you really got to feel like you're, you're rising up into contact. That's better. You actually get to see where you're tossing. How about that? How about that? So I, I think as a final, final tip, you know, a lot of us are always trying to hit our serves as hard as we possibly can. So I asked you, you know, if you're trying to hit it at 100% capacity. You didn't think you were, but now I think in retrospect, you probably were trying to hit it too hard, right? Yeah. And if, if you go at 75%, you could get 75% of your first serves in. If you're going at 90 to 100%, you're going to get 20% in. And on a good day, maybe you might get 50% in. But you know, the other thing that we're all trying to do is play tennis for a lifetime. So um, we have to, for longevity purposes, we have to play within our alignments. So we have to play within our power ranges as well. Um, and placement and consistency is far more important than just sheer power. Yeah. So your mechanics are better. Just keep working on the balance with your feet, sequencing with your left hand, right? and the ball placement and not forcing it. Those are the only things you need to focus on. And once those mechanics are really dialed in and you feel like the ball's traveling beautifully with less effort, then you, then you shift to spins and targets. Yeah. And really kind of build a, a repertoire of skills with mm -hmm. your serve. But uh, you don't need more power to play at a higher level, right?
All right. That was amazing. Questions at all? No, thank you so much. It was amazing. It was, uh, it was really good. Uh, thanks so much for watching today's video. Please leave your comments down below. I'll respond to all of your comments. Give us a like. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Uh, thanks again for watching today's lesson, and we'll see you in the next video.